This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. They offer heavy duty standing desks like the one that I just added to my studio. It absolutely will be remaining in my studio for years to come. The particular model that I'm using is the E7. Is it solid? Let me demonstrate. Is it wobbly? It's perfect for what I do. Producers and tech people in general spend a lot of time sitting and this is this solves that problem. Although if you'd rather drop the height of the desk to sit, you could go ahead and do that. Personally, I like to go back and forth to sort of switch things up. Just to give you an idea of my height, I'm almost 6'2 and totally comfortable with the height of the desk. In fact, there's even some more leeway to go quite a bit higher. So it's accessible to much taller folks as well. For me personally, it works great if I want to rehearse my live set in more of a practical way. So, you know, like standing as if I was playing at an actual gig. Not to mention that there's all of this new information coming out suggesting that sitting for long periods of time is just so bad for you. FlexiSpot with their standing desks solves this issue and the quality truly is there. They're very durable. Check out their website, which I've linked in the description. They're always having sales. I've also left a link to this desk model. It's the E7. All right, back to the video. So I did a set in Berlin during Superbooth. I played at a venue called OHM or OHM. They hilariously did not allow me to film my set. When I asked why, it was just a hard no. One of the managers mentioned that things kind of get crazy in Berlin clubs. People get naked sometimes. <laughs> Although someone from the crowd did sneakily get some footage. So here it is. I also played another set along with my buddy Kaku at Marla Records, also in Berlin during Superbooth. I thought it was super fun, but that being said, the footage that I got there, I, I'm not super happy with it. I, it doesn't really reflect uh, my best work. And so I'll be showing you like some of the highlights, but I'm not gonna be posting the, the full set. And so here is more or less the exact setup that I brought to Berlin. We'll be going through each and every piece of gear here and what role it plays within the set, as well as some pros and cons of the gear that I'm using in this iteration. I also like to think of portability and cleanliness. I like for my setups to be nice and clean and efficient and not too space consuming. Something that I could fit into a backpack, which is what I did with this setup. This was actually in an analog cases backpack that I brought on a carry-on uh, to Berlin. The point of this is like a demonstration for what might be practical for you and your setup. Any of these pieces of gear might fit in for one reason or another. And so everything will be considered. And so let's break down the setup. And by the way, if you'd like to jump to anything specific within this video, feel free to use the timestamps linked in the description. So all of the music is pretty much living in Ableton Live for this setup. For the Berlin sets, I was routed through the Motu Ultralight Mark V. The reason why I chose it is because it's very, it's a lot smaller and I could fit it uh, into an analog cases backpack along with the rest of this gear. <laughs> and from the Motu Mark V into my mixer, although now we're using the Apogee Ensemble, which has a nice clean uh, D-sub cable, which is very convenient. I've said this several times before, you guys probably see me using this mixer. I will never get rid of this thing. I've been losing my sh** over it for the past few months and like the inspiration, like the, the honeymoon phase, just it hasn't died down. I'm <laughs> still super inspired by it. The master out of the Model 1.4 is going into the RMX 1000. So this is like uh, a master. I'm using it as a master effects unit. This setup here really confuses sound guys because they always think that I'm going out of my uh, mixer. I'm not. I will say that these are very DJE sounding effects. I mean, Pioneer, right? So it that's what it is. You see a lot of like modern ultra power DJs using this thing. And so finally going out of the RMX 1000 and into your ears. In terms of software effects via Ableton, I'm using the EC4. The reason why I chose this one is because again, it's very compact and it gives me what I need for, for this set. And then I'm using the Novation Launchpad X in such a simple way. I'm just, you know, scrolling from one scene to the next and launching. So very standard. Let's dig a little bit deeper into what each of these things is doing. As I mentioned, Ableton Live is the 
fucking brain to this operation. So I've got a bunch of scenes here or here. These are all stems, like original stems from my own music. And so what I've done is I've remixed different instruments together to create a set. And I've organized each track into cues. So I have Q1 and Q2. So I'm able to like transition DJ style uh, from one cue to the next using the model 1.4. On top of this, I have effects for each of these voices, as you could see down here, and I'm controlling those using the EC4. So let me give you an example of this. So I'm actually gonna just play the drums. So this here is delay. And I could sweep that delay down if I want like a darker delay. So that's controlling the filter on that delay. This is like a sort of like a gated reverb, which sounds nice on drums. Then a much longer reverb. Same thing, I have control over the filter on that reverb. Let's say I wanted to do something like that, I could just drop the filter on that. And then this effects here, this is called fade to gray. So let's hear that on, there you go, the drums with no filter. Again, with delay. Two, three, eh. So the effects that are routed here, I'm using 100% stock Ableton plugins so that there's no issues with latency or anything like that. So nothing complicated at all going on there. As many of you may know, I have tons of dollars gear, so why not use that instead of Ableton Live? At this point, for me, it's just the the, the time consumption that it takes to not only learn dollars gear, that's one thing, and it's super fun, it's putting together a set using that dollars gear. For me, that's that's the most time consuming thing. You just run into so many walls and just given the nature of what I do with content, like I'm constantly having to learn new pieces of gear. So for me, it's just nice to have something to fall back on, something that's super efficient at what it does. And with the Dollis thing, it's not even like the initial construction of your set, as in like initially putting all the parts together. The thing that takes so long for me is going back and sharpening everything, sharpening all the parts, mixing parts, which is something that you're just bound to be doing uh, if you're creating a live set that you want to present to people, or something that I'm bound to be doing at least. I did have to get over like the laptop on stage thing. Sometimes I care about it, sometimes I don't. I've actually spoken to some of you about this. It's like a pet peeve. And some of you have flip-flopped back and forth whether or not you actually care about it. For me, I don't really care at this point. So for the Berlin set with Ableton, I was routing via USB into my Motu interface. The audio interface that I'm using here though today, uh, the Apogee Ensemble requires Thunderbolt. The reason why I chose the Motu Ultralight Mark V is because of the size versus output ratio. It's tiny, it has 10 outputs and virtually zero latency. It was pretty much exactly what I needed and what I continue to need for live sets, uh, like when I travel. And so I secured it. And so in Ableton, you can see that I've changed my outputs. So these correspond to these channels here. So this is output three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of course, these are all stereo tracks. And so speaking more on the Model 1.4, I've done a first impression video on this unit. Here it is. I've been raving about this thing since the day I got it. It has four channels, and so I've made my Ableton session very simple, bare bones. As you saw before, I've broken down each track into drums and melodic parts. And let's just take a look at that over this track. Shout out to Struli, by the way. And so if I wanna isolate this master filter, let's say just on the drums. Same thing, maybe just on the uh, melodic part. Maybe add some effects over top of that on the drums.
And so given the setup, this adds like a certain flexibility and even DJ quality to the entire set. There is something that's a bit of a con with the Model 1.4, depending on how you look at it. And that's this Master EQ over here. I do find that it's like a little bit surgical sounding. It's not like an effects EQ, you know what I mean? So let's say a common move that I do, I would max out the mids, drop everything else. It doesn't have that same sort of impact. Maybe that's a bit cooler, but yeah, in any case, it's, it's pretty surgical. Whereas if I do the same move, let's say on this one, it's just got a bit more crunch to it. Three. I would equate this section to be more of like an on the fly mixing sort of thing, which is a tool that DJs obviously need a lot of. Whereas the RMX 1000, this is more of a DJ tool there's like a performance aspect to everything about it. And so this feels like the perfect transition to talking about the RMX 1000, which looks like a surgically removed car radio from the early 2000s. I did a full review on this. Here it is. I find that it's a perfect transition tool in DALA setups because transitions are hard in DALA setups. I think the best thing would just be to hear a couple of examples. Let's hear it over this riff here. My go-to is bandpass filter plus echo. So if I want just a straight up band pass, I turn these down to zero, but then if I turn this knob up, I get different echo subdivisions, 16 notes, eight notes, dotted quarters, and so on. And then over top of that, there's a filter on this side, which I can control the speed of. If I want a really quick filter, a much slower one. So that's my go-to. There's just straight up echo as well. There is high pass filter, which I also use quite often. There's low pass filter, which I often use just straight up as a low pass. So smooth. Love that. Noise. Right, so those are my go-to for, uh, for the RMX 1000. I also use the EQ semi-often for straight up EQ. Very crunchy sounding. There's like little transition things. Right, so these two are my go-tos for this section here, the transition roll. If I want more kick in that transition, more low end, high end. So these are all presets, can't get more hands-on than this. Everything is just right there in front of you. So all of this is great. There's one con to this unit, I think. it sounds too dj -y. <laughs> almost i mean it almost sounds too dj -y. i haven't gotten bored of it yet because the effects are really lush and useful for what i'm doing i actually own an octatrack and i'm thinking of replacing this with the octatrack so basically i'd have two mixers in my set right model 1.4 into the octatrack being used as a mixer so the only thing about that is if i use the octatrack i won't be able to fit this entire setup into my backpack so and so which MIDI controller am I using with Ableton Live and why? I'm using the EC4 because you guessed it, it's the perfect size for what I need and what I'm trying to do. We've played around with these on drums. We haven't really touched on melodic stuff with these effects. So I'm gonna play this melodic part and we'll try adding different effects from everywhere, starting with the EC4. Just see where we can go with this. So that's delay, reverb, this is some other type of reverb, I can't remember which one. I'm not gonna use Fade to Gray because it's... That's pretty cool though. Let's get the drums in. Oh God.
get a bit more volume on this. Bit of EQ. I already know this is gonna sound amazing. Band pass. Drums are back. Two, three, four. Very cool. By the way, I'm using it in such a simple way. I'm not using it to its potential. It works so well in DAWless setups as well. Something I'll be exploring in future videos for sure. Let me know if you have any questions about that, by the way. I can't really think of any cons about the EC4 other than the fact that it's like, it's small, right? But that's, that's the reason why I like it, but there's only so much that you could do with it because there's only 16 pots on it. Whereas something like the PC12, which is another unit that I own, there's like too many pots, right? <laughs> so. So I'll make mention of the Launchpad X even though I'm using it in such a simple way. I'm basically just using it to jump from one scene to the next. That's about it. Two, three, four. Right, so it'll latch on, it knows like when the downbeat of the next bar is. For future iterations of this setup, I'm actually thinking of having more control over stems. So like maybe having four stems instead of two, so drums, bass, synth, and like some sort of lead part instead of just melodic and drums. That way I would just have finer control over my parts, but at the same time, I'd be giving up transitions in the way that I'm doing them now, right? Because I only have four channels on the Model 1.4. I've had my eye on another Fader Fox MIDI controller called the MX-12, which would be like the perfect unit for the uh, iteration that I just described. It would allow me to get rid of the EC4 because it has faders as well as knobs, right? So I'd have volume control over each track as well as effects control with the pots. Another iteration, as I already mentioned, I'm looking to replace the RMX 1000 with the Octatrack. I've been sort of toying with the idea, be a good way to get use, more use out of my Octatrack right now. And these do sound very DJ-y, so it'd be cool to kind of step out of that realm uh, into, I guess, something a bit more original where I could like sort of build my own effects. Another Electron Edition, actually, something that would also be cool is using the DigiTact specifically for fills and transitions. One thing that I think is missing from a lot of live sets, and for sure my own live set, is drum fills going from one section to the next. Of course, effects transitions are always helpful, but sometimes you just want like a big fat fill go going into that next section. So the idea that I have is to just literally upload a bunch of fills onto the DigiTac, sync that up to Ableton Live, and then press the page button on the DigiTac when I want that fill to happen. And this is definitely something that I'm considering doing a full video on in the near future, actually. And just some final words about this setup and like all future iterations. Within electronic music live sets, I'm really starting to wrap my head around building an instrument with several units, you know what I mean? Like thinking of your set and your live setup as a live instrument with all of these moving parts, which is basically what I what I what I just broke down to you. I'm starting to learn that this is a big part of performing live electronic music and I'm happy to show you guys my progress along the way. And if you have any questions, let me know. I hope that this helped you guys out. There are affiliate links for all of the gear mentioned in this video. Make sure to use those links if you end up purchasing any of this. I would make a small commission from that sale. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It helps me a lot, so please do it. And also again, I'm offering one-on-one -on -one lesson discounts to Patreon members, along with a bunch of other exclusive content. I'm dropping quite a bit of video content there these days, so go check that out. You're welcome to join. It's great to have you here and hope to see you guys very soon.